I know this one is a little late. I am fully aware that I probably should have filmed this video like two weeks ago. <laughs> and I meant to film it two weeks ago, but I think I mentioned in my Disneyland vlog, I don't know if any of you have watched it yet, but I mentioned that my eye, this one in particular, has been giving me a lot of problems in the past couple of weeks. So that is why I haven't filmed in like the entire month of June. So I kept kind of putting off this video and being like, well, I'll film it later. I'll film it tomorrow. I'll film it the next, you know, whatever. And my eye just never ended up feeling better. So I had to put this off until now. My eye is feeling so much better. And we are gonna get into this video. I'm so excited to talk about some of the books that I read in May. And we're gonna talk about some of the books that I want to read in the rest of June. So we kind of have a lot of stuff to cover and I wanna get into it quickly. So the first book that I read in the month of May was Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica S. Olson. And I gave this book a four out of five stars. So I read this as an audiobook and I really enjoyed the audiobook. It was super quick, super intriguing. And I was so excited to find another Phantom of the Opera retelling. So I had totally forgotten that this was even a Phantom of the Opera retelling and that it had been on my most anticipated of 2021 video. And I found it on Hoopla and I was like, ooh, this looks really interesting. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know this book. I've already read the synopsis for it and everything. So like I said, it is a Phantom of the Opera retelling and it's pretty loose, which has been kind of the pattern with a lot of the Phantom of the Opera retellings, which is not a big deal to me. I haven't even read the original book. I've only seen the movie, like the movie musical. And I was like super obsessed with Phantom of the Opera back in high school. I went through a phase like during one summer where I watched it multiple times a day like every day so I was like fully fully obsessed with Phantom of the Opera so like this year has definitely been the year of me reading these retellings and this one so far has been my favorite I really really enjoyed the different changes that were made throughout this novel and I really also liked the magic that was woven in through the plot. I felt like it worked a lot better than Ruin Song, which is one that I read, I think, back in April. And I think this just did the magic system so much better than Ruin Song did. I also really liked a lot of the narrative choices that were made in this novel. It has kind of a bittersweet ending. I don't want to explain what that bittersweet ending is, and I know you're probably all having these ideas and assumptions of what it is. I promise you it is very different from your assumptions so put those out of your mind. Just go into it knowing that it is a little bittersweet. It's like a really really great ending. It's something I don't see a lot in YA literature and I really really appreciated it in this book specifically. Also I will mention that this is kind of a villain origin story book which I wasn't expecting going into the novel. Like I knew that the main character was going to be a little bit on the gray morality side but I didn't think that it was going to be a full-on villain origin story so that was really fun to find out and I really enjoyed that aspect because you know me I love villain origin stories so if you're looking for one I totally recommend Sing Me Forgotten. It's not a super dark book in terms of content but it does have its moments and I found it to be really really interesting for a Phantom of the Opera retelling. So the next book is one that I've talked about a couple of times on my channel at this point and that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I read this for someone else's video. I am pretty sure that the video is not up yet so I still don't really want to talk too much about that video but I ended up reading this book and I gave it a four out of five stars. I really really enjoyed it however I don't think that I enjoyed it as much as The Night Circus, which I read a couple of years ago. So The Star of the Sea is kind of hard for me to explain because even now it feels kind of like an enigma. Like I know that I read it, I know that I retained a lot of what happened in this book and I can remember it, I can recall it, but at the same time I can't formulate exactly what this book was about because it explored so many different themes. It's kind of like this secret society of storytellers of these magical beings that 
are directly tied to these stories. It's very, very difficult to explain. <laughs> I might just end up reading the synopsis inside the book. It says, Far beneath the surface of the earth, upon the shores of the Starless Sea, there is a labyrinthine collection of tunnels and rooms filled with stories. The entryways that lead to the sanctuary are often hidden, sometimes on forest floors, sometimes in private homes, sometimes in plain sight. But those who seek will find. Their doors have been waiting for them. So I think even from that synopsis, you can tell that you still don't really get an idea necessarily of what the book is about. Basically, Zachary, the main character, falls into this secret society, into this different world that he has never really understood or known about. So it's a really, really intriguing book. I 100% recommend it. I just feel more personally connected to The Night Circus. I'm not sure why, but that one just holds a more special place in my heart compared to this book. The next book I read was also an audiobook, and that was Thorn by Intisar Kanani. And this is the beginning of, I think, a duology. It might be a series, but I'm pretty sure it's only a duology. And I want to give a quick trigger warning for this book for abuse, violence, and death. There's definitely a lot of abuse within the main character's family, so I will put out a warning for that. Basically, this book is about a princess, and she is from a very poor country. They're not doing very well at the moment. So she is promised in marriage to a prince of another kingdom who is much more prosperous. And so because the princess is so disliked within her family, this kind of seems to be the perfect arrangement. But unfortunately for Alira, there is some magic at play and she ends up getting swapped with one of her sworn enemies and she is in her body and her sworn enemy is now in Alira's body. And because Alira's had such a difficult life, she kind of takes this opportunity and runs with it and decides to become the goose girl of this new kingdom. And I really, really loved this book so much. I gave this book a five out of five stars. It's one of my new favorite fantasy books and I desperately want to get like a physical copy so I can reread it and annotate it because I feel like there's so much that I as a fantasy writer could learn from this book. And I even feel like there's a lot that other fantasy writers can learn from this book. The world building was immaculate. The characterization was so good and so distinctive from each character. And I also loved the progression of the romance. That was just chef's kiss amazing so iconic it had so much good tension it had so much good back and forth there were secrets and things to be revealed it was so exciting and it's not even like a hugely action-packed kind of book but it just was so well written the narrative was so intriguing and the characters really really drove this story forward and I really enjoyed reading it and listening to it on audiobook. So if you're looking for a fantasy book that's a little bit different than other fantasy books that are out there and that are super popular, I 100% recommend Thorn and I cannot wait to read the sequel soon. I need, need, need the sequel so bad. And then going along with Thorn, I actually also read The Bone Knife, which is like a little novella that goes along with Thorn and that introduces the characters that are in the next book. I really, really enjoyed this one. I thought it was so well written and made me super excited to meet the next characters in the second book. And I also recommend that audiobook. It was really good. <laughs> and then the very last book that I read in the month of May was Illusionary by Zoraida Cordova. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a five out of five stars, I believe. And it was such a good ending to this duology. So because it is a sequel, I don't want to talk too much about what it's about. But if you've seen some of my other videos, you know how much I love Incendiary. It was such a good book. I have four copies of it. I feel like that perfectly illustrates how much I love this book. So if you like Enemies to Lovers, if you're a big YA fantasy reader, if you want something a little different, a little new, I 100% recommend Incendiary. It's such a fun book. The Enemies to Lovers is there. It is potent. It is so exciting and it continues on in Illusionary and this was such a fun book to read. I actually ended up reading it both physically and as an audiobook. 
that's something I've been doing a lot more lately is reading it physically and then following along with the audiobook. It really makes reading physically so much more interesting than just like, you know, sitting there and reading the pages and the words and whatever. <laughs> I don't know why I love to follow along with an audiobook. It's just so soothing. But yeah, I really ended up loving this book so much and I just, I love everything that Zoretta Cordova puts out. Her books are absolute magic. So if you haven't picked up this duology, I 100% recommend that you do so immediately you will not regret it. So yeah those are the books that I read in the month of May. So I've already read five books in the month of June and I will list some off for you. I'm not going to go into detail about them but I've read She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quinlan. I've read We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. Sorry, I had that upside down for a moment. I read One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I read The Witch King by H.E. Edgman and The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. So like I said, I've already read five books this month and all of them were audiobooks. I've been in such a big audiobook mood lately, which is so much fun. I love reading audiobooks so much. I'm actually currently in the middle of one that I have on Scribd and that is The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I am currently on chapter 14 of that audiobook. Really, really enjoying it. It's definitely a really fun and just gorgeously written fantasy book. It's adult, which I like. I've really been getting into adult fantasy so much more this year. It kind of reminds me of The Midnight Bargain and also Sorcery of Thorns. It just kind of has that vibe to it, which I really appreciate. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that book. And I'm also currently in the middle of Music of the Night by Angela J. Ford. I am obsessed with this book. It's just like, I started reading it outside of Starbucks a couple of days ago. I'm on page 80 and oh my gosh this book might take the cake for my favorite Phantom of the Opera retelling. It is so good. I'm really really enjoying it and the writing is gorgeous. The characters are so interesting. The dynamics are really interesting and I really love the unique twists that she put on Phantom of the Opera. I feel like it really works. And I'm surprised that this book has kind of gotten some mixed reviews. It's definitely written with like my kind of taste in mind. I really appreciate it. Like I said, the writing is really gorgeous. It's very lush, intricate kind of writing. Um, one might say it's a little flowery, which I appreciate. I know it's not everybody else's cup of tea, so that might be why some of the reviews are pretty mixed. But so far, like I'm almost 100 pages in and I'm loving this book. Like I cannot find an issue with it. So I'm really surprised it's been getting mixed reviews. I'm personally loving it and I can't wait to read more of it. Okay, so on to some of the other books that I want to read for this month. As you all clearly know, June is Pride Month and we are halfway through June. So there are a couple of other queer books that I really want to read. I've been trying to keep two queer books this month. Um, I think there's only like two books that I have read this month that aren't queer, but for the most part I want to read queer books. So the first book that I would like to read is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. And I don't know how likely this is going to be that I read it. I know that it's kind of like a kind of fairly intricate fantasy novel. I don't know how intricate it is, but it is adult fantasy, so we're gonna be dipping our toes into that, and I'm really, really excited. The next book is Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. This is YA fantasy, which is probably more likely. I didn't realize that this book had a signed book plate in it, so that's really cool. Um, this one has a sexual representation. This one has lesbian representation. I probably should have mentioned that, but um, yeah, this one has a sexual rep. I'm really, really excited to read this one. And I feel like I've just put it off for way too long. I probably should have read it like a year ago. The next one is one I got recently. This has sapphic representation, but I'm not sure specifically what labels or like specific representation is in it. But I do know it's sapphic and that is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrienne Tooley. I'm so excited to read this one. I've heard so many good things about it. Sorry, I just got a text. That's super annoying, but... I am so excited to read this book. I've heard so many good things. People keep recommending it to me, so clearly I'm probably going to like this book. 
And then the last one is kind of surprising because it is a contemporary, but I have been really enjoying it. I am currently 46 pages into it. And that is Can't Take That Away by Steven Salvatore. Salvatore, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. There is gender queer representation in this book with the main character. And it's all about this main character, Carrie, wanting to be a diva, kind of like Mariah Carey. I'm really enjoying it. As you know, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I have a little bit of a soft spot for contemporary books about music. I love those kind of books. I'm always drawn to them, and I always end up really loving them. So I'm super excited to read more of this book. Like I said, I'm only about 40 pages into it. But so far, so good. So yeah, here are some of the books that I am planning on reading for the rest of the month of June. And like I said, I've already read five books this month, so I have some pretty high hopes that I will be able to finish this entire stack of books this month. I'm really hoping. You know me, I feel like whenever I promise something, I end up not really fulfilling it very well. So you know what, we'll see how it goes. So I hope you all enjoyed this wrap up and TBR. I know it was a little weird. I'm so sorry, hopefully for next month, I won't be as late with this video. But if you did end up enjoying it, I hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Storygraph, TikTok, they're all linked down below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!